Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah and a very good afternoon. A very good afternoon to all of you and to whoever whoever's uh, already been logged into our uh, program. Welcome to our International Islamic University of Malaysia webinar this afternoon, which will be focusing on futures literacy and higher education in Malaysia. I'm sure some of us may not understand what futures literacy is all about, maybe half of us or even more. So I'm delighted that we have three experts joining us this afternoon. But before I introduce them, let me say that this is a live event and we will have an opportunity for questions from our audiences, but they would need to be written in the chat section. So feel free to uh, write your questions at the bottom or comment. I'm going to now uh, introduce our first speaker. Dr. Muhammad Rivani Bustami is the head of Nusantara Malay Archipelago Research at the Center for Policy Research and International Studies, University of Science Malaysia, USM. He graduated with a degree from Purdue University and master's from University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. He obtained his PhD from London School of Economics in organizational and development sociology. He is also the advisor for Malindo Nusantara Research Center at Universitas Muhammadiyah, Jakarta, and at Universitas General Ahmad Yani Chimahi, Bandung. I hope I pronounced that all correctly. He has published, carried out research and workshops in numerous areas, including migration, CSR, Nusantara, religious pluralism, and multi-ethnic communities, research strategies, as well as future studies. The second panelist is an academic giant. He's been described thus by many. Professor Dato Dr. Ahmad Murad Marikan is with the International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization, International Islamic University of Malaysia, ISTAC, IIUM. He currently heads the Malay Islam Civilizational Unit and is also a senior fellow at the Southeast Asia Research Center and Hub, De La Salle University, Manila, the Philippines. He looks at future studies as a social science historian. He holds a baccalaureate in political science, University of Minnesota, a Master of Arts in Mass Communication, University Technology, Mara, and a PhD in History and Philosophy of Science, University of Malaya. He has written and edited 16 books on social science, media, history, and society. And uh, he's also very enthusiastic about media in Malaysia and has a lot to say and he's trying to shape the industry as we speak. One of his renowned books is titled Media History, Worldviews and Communication Fe Futures. Finally, I feel privileged to have us, with us Puan Fazida Ethnin. Fazida's interest in future studies started in 2012 when she was given the task to coordinate the preparation of a university strategic plan. It was during the period of study that she found the significance of future studies in ensuring a sustainable strategic plan for her university, UTEM. Mentored by a renowned futurist, her interest in strategic foresight extended further. Her active works in future studies involve facilitating courses producing journal articles and presenting papers at national and international levels. And she incorporated and presented futures thinking and foresight approaches in her analysis of the Malaysian higher education institutions scenarios. Fazida has been teaching English as a second language since 1990, and she currently teaches the undergraduate students at University Technical Malaysia Malaysia Malacca, UTEM. She also leads the Chancellery Management and Relations Office, where she oversees matters related to, among others, university marketing, media planning, image branding, and event management. 
Fazida is a member of the Association of Professional Futurists and is an emerging fellow 2021 for the UK Futures Observatory. And this just took place very recently. So congratulations, Puan Fazida. Well done. Anyway, um, I'm going to ask a big question to all the three esteemed panelists. Um, each of you will have three to five minutes to respond, starting with Dr. Rivani, followed by Professor Murad, and then Madam Fazida. And then after that, I'll try, I will dig deeper. Okay? Um, something simple, something basic. What to you is futures literacy? Please free to jump in. Um, you know, it will be Dr. Rivani. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, IIUM. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Zarina, for inviting me into this very important uh, event, a very important webinar. I feel so touched to move, uh, and, and it's been a while since uh, future study uh, been uh, highlighted in mainstream uh, academic discourse. Alhamdulillah. IIUM is championing it uh, and for, for higher education. And so I appreciate it very much. Uh, let me go straight to the crux of the matter. Um, my take on, on uh, future studies and, and, and futures literacy is that you can look at it from uh, two perspectives. Yeah? One is the, the more modern uh, Cold War, uh, World War I, World War II perspective which is uh, the very much the modern perspective. The other one is much more classical. Right? And let me start with something that's more classical. If I, may, uh, if I may share my screen a bit, I don't do a lot of this, but let me, let me share something here. Um, the, the, I would say the pioneer of, of uh, uh, future studies is Ibn Khaldun. Right? And he, and this is a, uh, I thought it'd be a, a good quote to start. And that is, he says, the past resembles the future more than one drop of water resembles another. The past resembles the future more than one drop of water resembles another. Let me give him, let me give, share you with another quote of his. Ibn Khaldun also said, he who finds a new path is a pathfinder. Even he, even the trail has to be found again by others. And he, will walk, he who walks far ahead of his contemporaries is a leader even though centuries pass before he is recognized as such. So what happened with uh, Ibn Khaldun is that he's, he's known for his work in history, but he's also a social philosopher who actually pioneered many of the new social sciences, including uh, sociology. What he did uh, with vis-a-vis -vis future, future studies is that he reorientates the thinking of social scientists, of scholars to understand that history or events in life and in the world, uh, politics, world, economics, world, society has, has patterned, yes. has, yes. has information, you know, uh, flow, right? So, and this transformational flow is indeed uh, a form of future studies. You can understand how things change, you can understand how the past and the present will be connected to the future. So future studies is actually a systematic and multidisciplinary study of the future. It becomes powerful when it combines a multidisciplinary perspective of understanding, of imagining the future, uh, not just from economic point of view, not just political point of view, not just from technological point of view, not just from business a sociological point of view, but the multidisciplinary nature of it. So it follows a, a kind of a, a, a esteem or methodology that is based on multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary uh, nature. So uh, th that is future studies. And but the weakness of the future studies is, is that it it is the it depends on the inputs. If the inputs are problematic, then the trajectories are problematic as well. If the inputs are strong uh, and, and, and systematic and uh, creative, then the future analysis 
will become uh, powerful, will become creative, will become much more comprehensive as well. Um, then I, the, and that is the transformative power of future literacy and future studies. I, sh I should stop there first. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rivani. Uh, Professor Murad, what to you is uh, future studies? Uh, thank you, Zarina. Uh, essentially, uh, future studies is uh, an ensemble of uh, instruments uh, put together uh, to create or foresee uh, the future. In other words, uh, th these instruments uh, would be like uh, assumptions, uh, theories, uh, concepts, uh, methodologies, philosophies. Uh, they render, uh, uh, they take from the past and, 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 and render uh, visions and uh, preferences, uh, alternatives uh, for what, what may happen uh, 20, 30, 40, years down the line uh, but essentially in the modern period uh, of course we can we can go back to plato we can go back to the uh, classical philosophers we can go back to the Khaldun, but in the modern period uh, future studies uh, you want to know and understand futures literacy then we have to know the the location and the uh, uh, the time the moment in which future studies emerge future studies uh, is one of the areas that emerged after World War II. In fact, after World War II, there are a number of uh, areas, uh, including uh, cybernetics, uh, mass communication, and uh, uh, future studies. Uh, and uh, it was first used uh, by Rand Corporation in 1953 uh, to look into the future of humanity. It was, uh, it was used by the US Air Force uh, branch of social science. And 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 uh, and from there, uh, the, the concern, the premise is to to uh, uh, to define uh, the, hu the human society, to define human future, uh, to be concerned about uh, uh, humanity's future uh, for uh, a developed uh, civilization, and this was the concern of uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, in the aftermath of uh, World War II and during the Cold War period. And during the Cold War period, their concern was uh, the communist threat. It was used to, to engage uh, with different ideologies, with different uh, uh, movements and, and, and different uh, uh, ideas of uh, nation states, different ideas of society, because at that time uh, we find that uh, Many uh, new states were formed. It was a period of decolonization, and the, the Americans were concerned of how they want to contain, first of all, the, the communist threat, the Soviet Union, and second, on how to contain uh, new nation states. So, uh, what happened was that a group of social scientists, uh, economists, uh, sociologists, anthropologists uh, got together and they developed uh, certain methodologies, one of which was the Delphi method. Uh, and uh, this went on uh, until the 50s and the 60s, 70s and 80s, especially was the high point of, of, of uh, future studies. There were movements, uh, there were uh, societies created, organizations created, journals like uh, Futures, uh, periodicals, uh, journal future studies. Uh, these were created to bring together uh, uh, futurists, uh, mainly Americans and Europeans, uh, to, to delve into the future of humanity. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a field, uh, it's, it's an academic team, and it's also a, a policy team. And uh, it may not necessarily be called future studies, uh, but it is a branch of, or, or it's a team of the social sciences. Uh, and it was used heavily, uh, quantitatively as well as qualitatively. And one of the things that they engaged was uh, science fiction writers. Because science fiction writers uh, uh, have uh, a way of looking at uh, a scenario. And these are the scenarios that will merge together, uh, especially in the 60s and 70s. Okay. Yeah, 
thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Murad. I, I think that that is so helpful. And I was just going to say that um, IIUM, in the, in the middle of a completing a future scenario building workshop, uh, on our course seat is Professor Sohail and Ayatullah, and we finished two uh, two days. Um, you know, we have come up with the scenarios, and it's interesting because when you talk about science fiction, yeah, science fi they're the best people because they 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 are very visual, I think, and they're also fantastic illustrators. You know, so yeah, you, th that's a that's a point that really resonates with me. I'm sorry, um, I I was supposed to ask my questions later, but I I've strayed away. Uh, Madam Fazida. Please, we would love to hear from you. What is future <laughs> literacy to you and what's future <laughs> studies to you? Because I think you would be able to tell us the difference between the two. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zarina. Alhamdulillah. So, um, I couldn't agree more with uh, Prof. Dato Murat and Dr. Rivani uh, tracing down the history of uh, future literacy and future studies. And in fact, um, it's true that uh, futures literacy and future studies in, uh, dated back as far back as mentioned by Prof. Amamura just now, as far back as the 1500s, all right? And uh, during those times, future studies and future literacy, uh, they were embodied in divination, in prophecy, in soothsaying, in poetry, art, and philosophy, all right? Much more that uh, as we moved before the, uh, or during the World War, uh, period of after World War I, uh, future studies and future literacy were uh, became the, um, the the vehicle or the mechanism for uh, military uh, tactical strategy. All right, um, and um, over the centuries and uh, surviving two world wars and uh, rising with even magnified emphasis in the 1900s onwards, where we see uh, the start of journals uh, written or, or um, dedicated specifically for future studies. For example, um, the first journal was in fact um, started in 1960 um, by a French, uh, by, by the French. Um, the journal was called Futurables. Um, that was, uh, according to research uh, data, uh, that was the first ever futures journal introduced to the world, 1960. We, we weren't even born yet, Zarina, and futures were already there. So people were already thinking about the futures then, all right? And, um, and so futures uh, literacy to me is, um, in fact, no, let me just add to this now. So uh, from 1900s onwards, uh, futures works amplified. And today, UNESCO, pioneers in the futures literacy laboratories or the FLL, which is uh, well known uh, all over the world and which have impacted, in fact, um, you know, many nations and, of course, people globally. So, uh, futures literacy is, in fact, in a simpler term, it means capability, the capability, the skill that allows people to better understand the role that future plays in what they see and what they do. Now, if you are future literate, you can use the future. And here, using the future, you can do it, as, as mentioned by experts. You can uh, use the future via two ways or in, in two avenues. Now, first, we, all of us as, as humans, now we can, in fact, use the future via our imagination. That was what they did in the 1500s and the 1600s. So it, it, um, it came by imagination, all right? And the good thing about humans is that all of us can imagine. We have this power of imagination. So that is our tool to create our future. From imagination, we move to creation. And um, in fact, for uh, futures literacy, if you are futures literate, you can create. Now, how do you create? That you use the tools and the approaches in future studies. So future studies basically is a systematic study, all right, that, uh, that assists futures uh, literacy into something that's more tangible, that's more um, uh, quantifiable. So uh, future studies is a systematic study of possible, probable, and preferable futures. So this will include your world worldviews, the systemic, all right, and of course your metaphor or myth that underlie each of your uh, imaginated, uh, um, oh, sorry, uh, each of your uh, created uh, future. Now, um, over the years, um, I mean, after the, uh, especially after the 1900s, uh, future studies have been used uh, uh, basically by uh, risk mitigators. All right, to reduce risk, to avoid negative futures, because now that you can imagine and create your future and mitigate early, you can in fact 
prepare for worst case scenarios. You can prepare for uh, what's next to come. And, um, and, and because of that, you can soar and you can succeed better. And uh, we can even have our, or create our desired futures to something that is positive and avoid the negatives. And this is what future studies will take us to. I think that should suffice, Zarina. That's more than enough. And uh, it, it really explains a lot. Thank you for that, uh, Panfazida. Um, I'm, I want to. I would like to ask some pointed questions if I may to Dr. Rivani, um, because uh, based on my reading and my understanding, and and I need to gently draw everyone to the topic of the day. We're looking at futures literacy and Malaysian higher education, and it was the historical background is important and it's critical. So we know that it's just gone. You know, it goes way back. And uh, Professor Murat was saying the Americans brought it in the 50s. And then Frazida mentioned like, during the 1500s even. And I love the fact that Dr. Rivani began with a slide on Ibn Khaldun. It was very um, profound. Um, but I would like to ask um, Dr. Rivani, based on my understanding, USM, USM is the first university in Malaysia to have had an encounter with future studies in 2005. Um, and they they delved in this area of inquiry very bravely, championed by your by the vice chancellor at that time, Tanfi Zulkifli Abdul Razak, who happens to be uh, the current uh, rector of IUM presently. So it was it was explicit in the article that he championed it, despite the fact that it was not even a program at the university yet. Could you please explain to me what type of impact it had on on USM, please? Okay, um, let me see. All right. Um, I can I can share my my experience from uh, two perspectives. Yeah, one as a as a lecturer at that time was I think it was ten years ago, more than ten years ago now. Um, as a lecturer, uh, experiencing the process of change, process of transformation in USM. The other one is as a lecturer who teaches uh, future studies. Yeah? As a, as a lecturer, as a member of the USM academic community, um, one of the transformative uh, powers uh, of, of the futures approach that was introduced by uh, into USM, of course, championed by Professor Tansri, Professor Zul himself, and uh, a team of people, uh, is that uh, it creates number one uh, a mobilizing force that orientate the community to, community towards a, a, a shared vision. So it, it, it engages the community, it brings together the different desires, aspirations, criticisms, uh, different narratives, uh, different emerging issues, different causal layer analysis, uh, different push and pull factors, uh, different weights and all that. Uh, all the deans come together. Uh, so there's this process of engagement, the process of internalization of values, and ev eventually it creates a, a, a momentum towards uh, a shared understanding, towards a shared vision. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is a 100% uh, um, uh, process that is effective. Uh, of course, there are people or in, in different parts of the community of the university community that was not um, on board. I guess, yeah, and that's true for any situation. Otherwise, we will have a totalitarian kind of a regime, right? Which do we do not want to have as well. Right? And this is a university. University are full of Dionysians and uh, people who uh, have a you know the the the, the exaggerated, exaggerated sense of self importance right they, they, everyone thinks they're smart but amazingly with this process uh, a, a critical mass of people get together and was behind this whole uh, engagement uh, and what's in, what's important is this 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 process brought in uh, an, an important agenda as well and that was the sustainability-led university agenda, right? The sustainability uh, jives and becomes the inputs uh, into this 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 thing uh, called uh, futures, not future studies, but the whole process of engaging people into um, uh, 
painting a new kind of vision about where we want to go, what do we want to see, what narratives we want to see, what we are interested in, what values we are, we are, we, are, we want to pursue. Uh, so that and and sustainability was in a way um, an outcome of it uh, was was injected in the process, but then eventually it blends and synergizes and and, and, and emerges as the the main uh, common purpose. Yeah. Uh, but the, it was the futures uh, paradigm or futures episteme that led us to that. that. That is my take as a lecturer uh, from from and as a young lecturer and, uh, uh, and I managed uh, to uh, participate in some parts of the processes as well. So that is one. And the, the second one, if you're asking me about the impact, I can share with you the impact at the student level as well. So uh, when we first offered the course uh, uh, on future studies. It is coupled together. Uh, the course is called Globalization, Cyber Culture and Future Studies. In our survey, whenever we introduce a new course, uh, we have to do a market survey and all that. It was the first uh, course offered at undergraduate level uh, in Malaysia on future studies. Now, uh, if I may share, I may share another slide. I think I have another slide here. It's uh, just, uh, just a just something here. Let me see if, uh, uh, if I may. Uh, the, and the the, the is is three three ways that it impacted the students. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, there it is. Um, share screen. This is when you were teaching this the course teaching. Globalist, yeah, was, globalization, cyber culture, and future studies. Right. That was right, the name. Right. Yes. Can you see the Can you see the slide yes. now? Yeah, yes. Yes, okay. we can see it. All right. Thank you. Uh, so uh, now I'm, I'm no longer teaching there. There was when I was in teaching social sciences, I was an uh, anthropology, sociology uh, lecturer there as well. Um, and and it, it has it, it impacted the students at three different levels, informational, attitudinal, and behavioral. At the informational level, it expands uh, the student's perspective from very much a silo kind of understanding of the world, of society, of problems and they expanded the horizon of analysis and then imagination. So they integrate different perspectives and they need to understand the, 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 the this economic part of it, the technological part of it, the, the, the and ecological part of it, the political part of it. So expanded their analysis and also the imagination, right? So things that uh, are, are, are out of the normal expectation, you know, the wild card uh, scenario, uh, you know, any unexpected but possible scenario are being uh, are being incorporated into their understanding of the future of the possible futures possible future scenarios so what no, that is the informational level so they, they expanded the way they look at the world the way they can imagine about the world number two was uh, preparedness right? uh, attitude at the attitudinal level because they understand that they do not control the future they are only a certain aspects of the future that they control and there are scenarios in the future that uh, might be beyond uh, their own control, the, the, the economic control or their government control. And you know, just like COVID, right? For instance, right? Uh, you know, you, you know, it's just, uh, low probability, high impact, which is called the wild card scenario, which is we're experiencing right now. So they are ready for, well, there is that possibility that it can happen. There's a possibility that I can fail. So I mean, I need to be ready attitudinally, right? To be much more resilient as a student uh, encountering different uh, uh, challenges, right? And this course was a course about globalization, which is the theoretical part, the cyber culture, which is the application, the action research part, and future studies, which is the episteme, the methodological part. So they will need to apply what they learn about globalization to create a policy impact. So they need to find a single policy issue like accessibility to malls by person with disabilities, hygiene of uh, restrooms, uh, musola in, uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, gas stations, petrol stations, uh, you know, single issue uh, uh, and things like that. So they are ready to face different scenarios. So attitudinal uh, resilience and pre pre preparedness. And the third one, so at informational attitudinal, the third part, the behavioral. A behavioral, they, they shift from uh, behavioral rigidity to agility and focus. So there's this emphasis to be focused, focus, almost ob being obsessed to, to see a particular outcome. Now that's not necessarily a good thing if it's too rigid. 
Sometimes the outcome is not influenced by us, but influenced by other conditions. But with the futures uh, uh, literacy, right? Uh, they expanded the 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 behavioral um, portfolios of action. So this is just like what Bruce Lee said: "Be like water." You know, you can flow, and when the tides change, you change. When you need to flow with the stones, you still flow the stone. You do not need to be a cup, but we are in the cup. You flow like a cup. Cup. You know. So they have that 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 uh, uh, behavioral agility, the behavioral agility, but stay focused to a preferred uh, a scenario. As as being uh, um, uh, envisioned uh, or uh, being uh, uh, the, uh, the, has been taught in, in future studies, right? We have possible scenarios, and then probable scenarios, and then we have within the possible scenarios we have what we have as yes, the preferred uh, scenario, right? So, uh, right. Uh, in, in essence, uh, there are a lot of other things, of course, uh, uh, but then I think these are the three different levels of 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 uh, of change or transformation that uh, you can see students experiencing when they have this future literacy. That, that's no, wonderful. Thank yeah. you. I think you're, you're the you're the only. I mean, at the moment, um, it, you're, you're highlighting the impact of future studies on students uh, because you've had had that course, and uh, you had uh, that program, mm -hmm. and you taught it. And to and I think that's a beautiful way of putting it, Dr. Rivani. Be like water. Be fluid and agile like water. Keeping in mind while your eyes is targeted on the preferred scenarios and be aware of the of the future scenarios. There are alternative future scenarios. And um, after understanding and seeing them, you then decide what is your de desired future for your organization, for your family, for yourself. In this situation, it's what's the desired future for our university. Um, and with that background, I think it's 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 very apt that I ask Professor Murad, uh, Professor Dr. Dr. Murad. Um, can you please enlighten us? What steps has IUM taken to introduce the appreciation of the futures? in plural form, in the philosophical academic framework of the university, International Islamic University. Please, Professor Murad. Yeah, uh, you know, to understand uh, the steps and strategies taken by, uh, being taken by IAM, one has to go back to uh, uh, the periods uh, when the, the thinking first gel and was formalized, which is USM. It evolved from uh, USM and then it moved to uh, University of Science Islam Malaysia. And then it came to uh, the International Islamic University. Uh, one also has to factor in uh, the various phases of the development of the modern university. You know, the modern university is the Humboldt model uh, where there are two do domains, research and teaching. Uh, and uh, the universities have evolved, uh, especially after World War II. Uh, we look at uh, uh, before 1990, uh, there is one set of rules of the university uh, in Malaysia. And uh, after 1990 to about uh, 2010, there's another rule. And after 2010, uh, it began in uh, 2007, 2008, there's another function of the university. So what university, uh, uh, this university is doing is to uh, take another step uh, beyond those several uh, facets, development and evolution of the university in Malaysia. And one thing which I have to mention is that uh, uh, the International Islamic University has taken a, the correct step uh, to uh, establish a, a future studies office a future studies unit, a future studies division in the director's office. I think this is uh, perhaps the only university in Malaysia or the only university in, I've not, not heard of other universities in uh, other parts of the world. I think this manifests the, the drive and, and, and the, the uh, commitment of the university to uh, create and to, uh, to uh, sort of lay the, the, the consciousness of, of futures literacy. Uh, taking universities as organizing principles. In other words, uh, 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 looking at universities as organizations and how universities ought to plan uh, within uh, the uh, diverse of, of, of uh, uh, dynamisms, uh, internally and externally, within the country and outside and within the university itself, in society and so on. And uh, if, we, we, if we think of, of the steps taken uh, by this university since 2018, since uh, 
uh, Tan Sri Zul uh, moved in, uh, it has embarked on the, or uh, rather it has departed from a, a, an image of a, a non-human mechanistic university. Uh, it has departed from this uh, uh, culture of uh, key performance indicators. In other words, uh, this university wants to make uh, the university uh, uh, more human, more humane, uh, the university for, for humanity uh, in terms of uh, focusing on, on, on the human dimension. Uh, and we talk about the human dimension, we talk about emotions, we talk about spirituality. And, and these are the things that many universities have not, uh, uh, have, have not taken up or have not pronounced uh, in, in their policies. And this is important for this university. And if we look back at the, the genesis uh, in the modern period of, of future studies, uh, it is for the future of humanity. So what this university has done is to fall back to the, the, to the original idea of the concerns of the so-called, at the time, uh, civilized world vis-a-vis uh, -vis America, uh, looking into or trying to maintain uh, a, a, a civilization vis-a-vis -vis, uh, challenges and, and uh, threats by other societies and other civilizations. So what this university is doing is to move ahead uh, to look into, uh, of course, sustainability is, is inbuilt because one of the things that that uh, is the outcome of uh, the future studies movement is, if you remember, is the Club of Rome report in 1967. The Club of Rome is is, is a report by by uh, futurists uh, on their concerns of global sustainability, that the world may not be able to sustain uh, uh, with regard to industrial production, with regard to uh, the abuse of nature, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the idea of uh, the disenchantment of nature. So uh, again, uh, uh, this university uh, puts together uh, antecedent developments and uh, attempts to create uh, 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 a more prosperous future. And, and, and when we say prosperous, uh, the word that comes to my mind is sejahtera. Sejahtera, if we translate into English, it means uh, well-being. But there's no equivalent word in other languages. Uh, sejahtera is a Malay word, and uh, it, it, it's like water. It's uh, the vocabulary, the meaning is uh, very basic to any any uh, uh, member of, 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 of Malay society. The word sejahtera, uh, we ask for God, we ask uh, that our life be sejahtera, always, as always. And this university partakes on that philosophy. It moves on that. And uh, so uh, in, in that sense, apart from uh, the areas that, that, that are being taught or the disciplines that are being taught in the university, uh, uh, and also the, uh, the, uh, uh, the benchmark of the university as an Islamic university, uh, this university is also cognizant of the uh, concern and the rising consciousness on indigeneity and on the, uh, decolonization. Because, uh, see, colonialism has passed. Uh, imperialism has passed. I mean, we talk about colonialism, colonialism in, in the European sense. Of course, we, there, there is colonialism now with regard to uh, uh, the Palestinians, where they are colonized by Israel. But when we talk about uh, the, the uh, European colonialism on, on other parts of the world, has it's passé, uh, imperialism is passé. So now uh, non-European societies are, are looking at themselves, uh, are looking at uh, searching for their identity, uh, 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 decolonizing their being uh, with regard to... Uh, with regard to uh, uh, achieving uh, uh, self-consciousness. Uh, you know, we're not looking at uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs only, uh, but Maslow has another another level which he called peak experience. It's not self-actualization. So again, we're looking into that society across the board, across all religions. Uh, when a society reaches a certain level beyond that, then that society would be taken to be a society that is that have a, 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 
uh, 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 being uh, of self, being self consciousness. And one of the things that that uh, some uh, units of this university is doing is to look into uh, indigenous knowledge, is to look into uh, uh, systems of knowledge production that that uh, are more suitable for the well-being uh, of uh, that society. So we have to think global. I'm uh, sorry, we have to think local uh, uh, and not only global. It's so perhaps it's local if you look at it that way. So this is usually tries to look into these uh, elements and, and, and these factors uh, in terms of uh, looking at the community, uh, looking at the, the heart, the cult as the, the, the center of uh, uh, human agency. And, and this is where I think uh, universities have missed out. Uh, they are, they are, they're quite obsessed with uh, what, they are quite obsessed with rationality. Uh, the idea of rationality is, has overwhelmed uh, the modern university. So uh, the International Islamic University is moving away from that, the idea of uh, the obsession with rationality, uh, looking into uh, scholarship and academic work uh, as, as being premised on, on emotion as being premised on spirituality and as being premised on, on the heart, uh, where, where, where the heart is the most important agency that moves the world. Thank you. That's just so beautiful and profound. I cannot even begin to try and summarize that with my own words in fear that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to reduce the quality of what, whatever you've just said, Prof Murad, that just blew me away. But the word that comes to my mind is um, I'm hearing less focused on KPI, indigenization, humanizing education, the heart at the center. I'm hearing emotional value. I'm, I'm hearing, um, uh, you didn't say this, but it comes to my mind and besides spirituality yeah. and Sajahtra, the Sajahtra, yeah. I, I know that IU is just seriously looking at the Sajahtra academic framework right now is, as we yes, speak. Yes. Yes. Um, and um, it's just so timely that everything's happening now with the COVID, the pandemic, the pandemic exposing really the weaknesses in the systems, the gap between the haves and the have not so ruthlessly and brutally exposing it globally. And uh, because COVID took place, it just like a carpet being pulled under our feet. No one could, was, no one could see it coming. No one, yes, we had SARS before, but no one predicted no futurists maybe i'm not sure whether i've spoken to every single futurist yeah. i've spoken to one of you good ones but i don't think they saw it coming and but it's institutions that had foresight model that were more prepared um they were more they were able to handle it and i know that Puan Fazida is going to highlight this later in her talk, but I'm still trying to, I'm, I'm still relishing and, 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 and um, yeah, trying uh, to uh, capture. Zaina, institutionally, yes. I think we, we, we have to come to a point where we have to be honest. And uh, when, when, when the, the crisis came uh, and with, with the use of uh, you know, uh, the latest technology, that it, it, it takes away uh, that this that deceptive uh, persona from us, uh, that deceptive avatar is taken away from us. Uh, the deceptive these, what? Sorry, avatar, avatar, avatar. Okay, yes, <laughs> uh, is taken away uh, due to due to uh, uh, modern technology and and due to this present crisis. So again, uh, and and this is where organizations. I'm not talking only about uh, uh, corporate organizations. I'm talking about universities. Universities have to be honest, and corporate organizations would have to follow the university. And this is where I think the future is. That's brilliant. Corporate organizations need to follow the universities. This That's, university. Yes. Not any university, but this university. This particular international Islamic yes. university. Yes. Okay. Yes. That, that, that's a vision. <laughs> that's a that's a that's that's a huge vision there. And I think there are certain members of the Future Scenario Building Workshop attending this online yeah. webinar right now, <laughs> and they're going to be scrambling to try and put that down in their in their framework. Well, I'm going to beat them to it because I'll do it right after this. Anyway, um, I'm going to stop.
for a minute and uh, breathe because I found that presentation very, very overwhelming, um, Professor Murad. And um, later on, I would like to come back to you and ask you, yes. is future study a discipline? And I would also like to ask you, how do you develop future studies in the universities in Malaysia? And just a quick comment for Dr. Rivani. Dr. Rivani, you were so passionate when you were teaching uh, that particular clause, globalization, cyber culture, and future studies to your students. You impacted the students. And I'm, I'm really sad to know that that course doesn't currently exist in USM for whatever reason. So maybe later we can try and find out whether we could bring that to life again. And I know that myself, I will register for the course and online, even though I'm stuck in KL and you're in Penang. Okay, right now, can I please invite dear Puan Fazida to... Um, Explain to us, ask to unmute. I'm trying to unmute you, uh, Fazida. Can you please share okay. your yeah. experience with futures and how was futures transformative for your university? All right, thank you, Zarina. So um, before I move into your terms experience with uh, futures literacy and futures planning, I'd like to uh, reiterate uh, Prof. Datuk Murad's points just now. So, um, you know, the mentioning of bringing self-consciousness of the future and changes and uh, moving towards your preferred future, the efforts strategized uh, thereof for it. And uh, of course, I think um, uh, the, the crux of the, um, you know, uh, effort here is strengthening capacities, right? Strengthening capacities and of course your resources. So how do we do it? Now, uh, getting to that, Zarina, uh, you know, uh, actually Surah al rad if I can uh, quote uh, verse 11, Quoted, uh, quoted specifically, verily, uh, Allah will not change the condition of a people as long as they do not change their state themselves. So which means we are in control of our future and the future that we desire. Now, this is very important. Now, understanding this, even it, it has been mentioned in the Quran that we, we have to do something. There is an effort involved in there. So which means uh, at our capacity, if we have the resources and if we have the uh, avenues, we should be planning towards uh, a future that we desire. So for your time, um, futures literacy was introduced uh, to us by design. Now in 2012, uh, we were uh, at the start of drafting our succeeding strategic plan, 2012 to 2020, all right? And uh, the vice chancellor then was uh, Professor Dato Dr. Ahmad Yusuf Hassan, and uh, who in fact uh, had had a uh, very immersive uh, futures thinking discourse when he was serving USM then. Um, uh, with Professor Sohail in Ayatollah. So he had asked us to engage Professor Sohail um, to come to UTEM and guide us on futures planning so much so that um, it can be um, embedded or it can, it can uh, provide us, uh, uh, you know, a sturdy platform, a framework for UTEM strategic plan. So what happened was uh, we invited Professor Sohail and um, it was indeed an ingenious decision because prior to that, um, the word, I mean, like uh, uh, future studies, the term future studies, foresight, or even futures literacy uh, was something that's not familiar to most of us. And in fact, uh, for universities, as we mentioned earlier, just now with Dr. Rivani, I think USM started first. That was when uh, we were introduced uh, by uh, Dr. Ahmad Yusuf, uh, Professor Sohail. And um, after that, what happened was, of course, um, uh, engaging, that, that was the first time that UTEM uh, engaged with a futurist, uh, uh, Professor Sohail. And uh, of course, he, he guided us, he guided us over a three-day uh, workshop. And in which, of course, um, what I'm saying is, futures literacy and futures uh, scenario planning, there are, in fact, has transformed uh, our foresight, uh, foresight capacity, and in fact, aided us in uh, our strategic plan. Because... Uh, over the three days, yes, if I can share, uh, Professor Sohail, not only that he he um, guided us to the grind, you know, but he nurtured literacy. I think literacy, futures literacy is key and is very substantial uh, to understanding this whole future studies uh, for the Malaysian higher education. And um, with futures literacy, we could align our futures to our desired vision. Now, UTEM as the first technical university in Malaysia, now we've got this vision of, uh, you know, uh, to be one of the world's leading innovative and creative technical universities. Now, here, how do we carry this? Now, our, our inner story will have to be, uh, will have to be um, manifested 
um, in within all our stakeholders. Now, how do we do this? So uh, from the uh, uh, six pillars framework uh, provided by Professor Sohail, we, in fact, we, we uh, question or we discern our history. Now, the history of the university, how did we come about? What was the philosophy uh, behind the establishment of a technical university in Malaysia? Now, and uh, we question ourselves, um, how or what will our future be like? Uh, five years, eight years, because when, when we drafted the strategic plan, it was for 2012 to 2020. All right, so it was supposed to be for a, an eight year period. So we asked ourselves, what kind of future would we want UTEM to, uh, to have eight years from now? All right, and so um, we discussed um, what, what were our assumptions then? What were our alternatives then? And uh, upon doing all this, um, the, the, the rigorous uh, discussions and works, um, we somehow came up with our alternative futures. Um, we plotted, we articulated, and in fact, um, with all these foundational questions, uh, who we are, um, um, uh, the philosophy, and uh, where do we want to go? Um, how do we do it? What are our resources and all? In fact, all these questions broaden uh, our perspectives. Instead of thinking uh, towards one single future, we have multiple futures uh, parallel. And that um, is a very strong uh, engine uh, for us. In fact, um, in uh, 2012, when we presented or when we uh, articulated our uh, four distinct scenarios, uh, that soon became the bedrock of our strategic plan. And uh, here now, as we uh, as as we had uh, uh, foresighted in 2012, now here now 2020, at the end of our strategic plan, COVID-19 came in, and what we actually did in 2012. Uh, you know, through the, the Six Pillars Framework with deep insights, uh, we actually we actually saw 2020 in 2012. And uh, our strategic plan and our uh, uh, multiple or rather the four futures, alternative futures, all of them actually are happening now, right? Um, and uh, we... we so to say COVID-19, as uh, Dr. Rivani mentioned earlier in our discussion, um, of course, with futures planning, um, apart from the alternative futures, we were also brought into the thinking of emerging issues. Of course, emerging issues, you have, uh, you know, uh, the, the, um, um, the, the normal ones, okay, climate change, uh, global warming, um, social, political, and economic uh, uncertainties, uh, diseases, yes. But did we know COVID-19? No, we didn't. So like what uh, uh, Dr. Rivani mentioned, it's another wildcard scenario. But again, are we ready? Were we ready in March? Yes, we were. All thanks to future studies and the futures literacy. Uh, we have we have been fortunate. UTEM has been fortunate. That is all I can say. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pon Fazida. I mean, I think UTEM is a case in point that demonstrates how future studies actually helped them uh, cope with the current pandemic. Um, and she 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 she's put it so well. I don't need to say anything. Mm. Uh, can I can I now um, go back to? I mean, I'm just going to throw questions in the end, anyone can answer. Um, Dr. Rivani or Professor Murad or Pan Fazida, feel free to jump in. I wanted to um, ask you a question and yeah, and, 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 and you're being honest about everything we're discussing today. Um, is future study a discipline right now? Uh, is it a dis okay. discipline? Yeah. May, may I jump first? Uh, Prof it Murad, is, it please. Is, it is not a discipline. It is... Uh, the future studies, uh, is, as, as I've said, it's, it's uh, uh, an ensemble put together. It's a team uh, where uh, different disciplines uh, are used. Uh, anthropology, sociology, economics, political science, uh, engineering, mathematics, and so on, uh, across the sciences. Uh, they are used, uh, and uh, it's both a theory and a method. It's both uh, uh, theoretical uh, assumptions, philosophy, and 
the different methods, uh, for example, uh, foresight studies, scenario planning, uh, the Delphi method, and so on. Uh, it is, uh, in other words, it it, it brings together uh, methodologies, uh, assumptions, uh, thinking uh, from other disciplines. So it is not a discipline. Uh, in other words, it it will it is embedded uh, by the different disciplines uh, mm -hmm. over the years, over the last uh, 40, 50 years. But again, I have to tell you that uh, before World War II, uh, when when this uh, Vienna School of Philosophy uh, got together, they, they tried to uh, look into the future of society. Uh, they had certain values. Uh, uh, I mean, they are embedded in, in, in certain values, but when the Americans took over, they took away the value. They become value free. So mm -hmm. this is the, the the problem with when we we talk about future studies. So if when 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 the time comes for us to adopt and adapt future studies, that's where we reinsert uh, values into it. I think Prof Zul would be uh, very very much uh, into uh, values and the insertion of 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 uh, uh, a, a more indigenous, endogenous, okay? uh, indigeneity uh, in the theme of uh, future studies is critical if if uh, non-European, non-Western societies want to move forward. So, in that sense, uh, uh, it, it is a, a, an academic theme or a, a, a policy theme, uh, not a discipline. Thank you. Thank you for that. But how, I mean, are you, are you, so, but so then how best do we develop future studies in the universities? I mean, let's just imagine IIUM. What would you like yeah. to see happen? Uh, if we see future studies, uh, it's not a common program or it's not a common course in uh, universities in the world. Uh, you have uh, certain institutes, uh, even in Africa, we have, I think, this uh, future studies institute. Uh, perhaps what I know is that uh, Tampang University in Taiwan and uh, uh, there's one in the University of uh, Hawaii in Manoa uh, have some form of a bachelor's uh, program and then 1987 they have a, a master's program. So perhaps one or two universities uh, with uh, first degree and, and second degrees uh, in the 60s and in the 70s and in the 80s. But uh, we what you see is you don't have a, 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 a full-fledged program. Perhaps uh, in Malaysia, uh, you can some universities may, may, may take it up. Uh, we can have a, a program uh, on, on future studies or future studies uh, together with policy studies huh? or uh, elements of future studies embedded into uh, uh, courses like economics, like sociology, like uh, political science, uh, in a, uh, it, with regard to certain assumptions and certain methodologies. But I have to mention this also, that uh, in, in the 70s, uh, future studies, our elements of future studies uh, uh, were embedded in the curriculum and the syllabus of uh, certain courses in ITM. Uh, especially in sociology and in communication. You know, why I'm saying this is because uh, in the 70s, uh, you've heard of Alvin Toffler. Huh? All of us have heard of Alvin Toffler. Alvin Toffler is one of the futurists, uh, among hundreds of futurists that, uh, that emerged uh, in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And uh, the books of Alvin Toffler, uh, Future Shock, I think the first book, uh, and Third Wave, and uh, quite a number of books, were used as texts in uh, the sociology and communication courses. They were not termed as future studies, but they use as text uh, uh, where students uh, would, 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 would be able to examine and were able to evaluate uh, the, the, the evolution uh, of society from one point to another. Basically, we're talking about modern society. Uh, and they're making some projections at that time, uh, maybe a 20, 30 year projection, which, which is happening now. Uh, so what happened was then, uh, the students were not told that this was uh, 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 developed as, uh, uh, from future studies, but this was the output. Uh, the book uh, by Alvin Toffler, uh, the various books, uh, were outputs from future studies. So also Marshall McLuhan. 
And we study Marshall McLuhan, those who are in the media and communication know Marshall McLuhan as a media guru. Uh, at that time, in the 60s, 70s, Marshall McLuhan was termed as a prophet. And he is a prophet in terms of he prophesies many things. And his work was also an output of, of the future studies movement. And what did he prophesy? He prophesied that uh, two things. Uh, this probable thing, the, the medium is the message and the media is the extension of men. And what we have now in terms of the, the, the laptop that we're using, uh, the handphone is using is our extension, the prosthetic function of, of the media and the prosthetic function of, of, of information. So these are outputs uh, and outcomes of, of uh, the future studies movement. And, and, and so how we, we, we can embed, uh, we have great consciousness of future literacy is to embed uh, these uh, literature, uh, the literature on, on, on the science fiction, uh, the literature on the sustainability, the literature that talks about the, the future of society. In fact, uh, these are embedded uh, across the past and the future. Uh, you know, many years back, I met a Maori uh, chief while sending me to the airport, he said, you know, our past, uh, our future is the past. I was trying to read him and I got it. In order for us to envisage the past, we need to go back to the future, not for nostalgic purposes, but what we call, what so high we have called backcasting. <laughs> okay, mm. This is backcasting. Uh, hundreds or, or it can be a, a, a long term, uh, no? uh, not in terms of decades, but in terms of centuries, or whatever. So the, the, the past is the future. And when we, we're talking about uh, uh, embedding this, embedding futures thinking in university, we have to, again, factor in history. Uh, not only organization history, I think, uh, Dr. Fazila, you know that, uh, organization <laughs> history and organization memory, but right. society's history and, 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 and the nation's memory in history. So that, uh, having, having established uh, the nation's uh, memory in history, then uh, we move forward. And we can, from there, we can plan uh, many scenarios that we want. So I think this is how uh, uh, futures thinking and futures literacy can be embedded, apart from having a full-fledged course uh, in universities. Universities may be skeptical. I think perhaps, perhaps uh, you see uh, the International Islamic University, maybe the first university in Malaysia or in Southeast Asia or in Asia to have uh, a degree in future studies. That's what wow. I foresee. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That that's that's uh, again so much to that's really overwhelming, and um, so you suggested that future studies can be. Uh, it could be, you know, you, you could study it together, say, with economics or with policy studies. Even yes, I remember yes. not, not as a vacuum, not in a, not in a vacuum. Exactly. When when I remember when I was pursuing my MBA, we we studied uh, uh we studied scenario planning scenarios. I mean, the, you know, the the corporations are always looking mm -hmm. at. They always want to stay uh, one step ahead, ahead of the curve. Uh, what's going to happen yeah. to the industry? Um, let's look at geopolitics. Let's look at uh, what's happening in ASEAN. Let's look at talent management. Let's look at um, aging population. What's going yeah. to happen to to Toyota or or, or Honda in uh, in 2030? Right, and they 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 spend a lot of money just studying different types of scenarios, looking at how their products going to fare, but. Honestly, I don't remember future studies being mentioned at all. And sometimes, you no, know, Dr. Rivani, people tend to think that future studies is just like the normal scenario planning you learn in an MBA course. That there's very little difference. It's about strategic plan. It's about, um, you know, a ten-year plan. We do it all the time, you know, in the, in the operation departments. And do you agree with that view, Dr. Rivani? And I remembered earlier when we were chatting, you mentioned linking futures literacy to action research. Action research, something which really resonates with me because I've always worked in a think tank. I've worked very closely with Tansu Nordin and, and other um, policy people. And, and I always found that, um, you, yeah, I liked research that could recommend action that could lead to implementation. I mean, for me, it never made sense to come up with recommendations that could not be implemented. 
I think there should be implementation science. A lot of times, a very good plan fails because it cannot be implemented. So, mm-hmm. um, how do you link? I mean, firstly, do you how do you how do you explain to people who think that there is no difference between future studies and a good Scenario planning, it's the same thing, really. That's one. And two, how do you link it to action research and policy making? Wow, there's, there's a lot there. There were a lot of things are going in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> After listening to Madam Pita uh, Promora <laughs> and you also, Madam Zarina, and there's a lot. And I, I kind of, there's something that I, uh, connects immediately to 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 what I've done. Prepared something again. I like to share my 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 my, my some sl- two slides. Yeah, uh, uh, if I may. Uh, let me see. Um, yeah. Okay. Then. Uh, just now. Just now about the past. Yeah. Uh, a quote from uh, William Faulkner: "The past is never there. It's not even mm. the past." Right. Right. The past is never dead. It's not even the past. Right. In yeah. a way, we are not living, you know, in the present without having the past embedded in the present. And the mm-hmm. past, uh, that's that's what uh, from Murat's perspective, uh, or historical sociological perspective, right? Which is very much a Khaldun's perspective, right? You can understand history, you can understand society with the understanding. That it's a continuum, there's a process, there's an evolution, there's a pattern uh, to this whole thing called life, right? Uh, I, I, I definitely want to capture this. And before I forget, and I want to link to what uh, Juan Zarina was talking about just now, I want to share something which I, I, I thought uh, I, is, is important. Uh, and, and because the promora was saying something and I, I spent a lot of time with Promorat also in, in, in uh, Sam Prince before Center for Policy Research and International Studies. So what Pranzarina was talking about policy there, uh, and, and that, that is definitely the, the heart of, and soul of what we do at the center here. Uh, and one of the things that Promorat, well, many things that Promorat brought into the center, but this is something I want to capture, right? Uh, uh, and that, that is this. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in initiating policy and changes in applying future studies and the future literacy, I think it is very important to decolonize and to indigenize our future. So uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm right now heading this Nusantara Malay Archipelago research. And, and uh, I, I'm actually, uh, I, 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 uh, in a way, an outcome of what Prof. Zol has brought into USM the Sejahtera paradigm, right? So if you look at Nusantara uh, as, a, as a paradigm, uh, the policy of Nusantara uh, is a policy and a paradigm of Sejahtera. And if you look at a city that come close to the Nusantara, Malay Archipelago kind of city, right? To be one of those lah, yang, yang very few left, like, it's like Yogyakarta. Yogyakarta, the land is owned by the Sultan, the only Sultan left that is recognized and was given is given power in, in Indonesia. Uh, the land is owned by the, the Sultan, the Sultan, right? And the Sultan is also Gubernur, which is equivalent to Chief Minister or, or Ketua Menteri or Menteri Besar in, in, in Malaysia, right? Or, or Governor in the United States, right? Uh, the land is owned by him, and even UGM, uh, Universitas Gajah Mada, is owned by the king. But you can own it. Uh, he, 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 you can share. You, he, he he owns it, but he shares it with the rakyat. And the the, the community around around the kraton, around the istana, around the the, the, the palace, uh, a community that serves the public, and with their service, they're entitled to stay around. The, the village around the, uh, around the housing uh, surrounding the, the palace and they create a, a kind of a culture village. You learn about all kinds of uh, Nusantara culture over there. And you see the Yogyakarta uh, city, uh, Maliboro for instance, yeah? you see the Glendangan, the, the homeless together with students, with lecturers sitting on the floor, let's say, right, on the floor, 
drinking coffee, playing guitar, having intellectual discourse, not the malls that we can see in Jakarta or in, in, in or Kuala Lumpur in Singapore, right? That is the life. And, and this is the city that has the largest number of universities, and more than one, 200 university and uh, uh, higher education you know, institutions in, in one particular city, right? Uh, so, and, and this is a Nusantara kind of a paradigm. Now, bringing back to our conversation of future literacy, right? Um, and bring the issue of values. Um, definitely Promora is right in the sense that when the, the Americans took over, not all Americans, of course, um, uh, took over the, the discourse or hijacked the discourse of, of, of future studies, uh, they're into value free, uh, very pragmatic, uh, very, uh, 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 very practical in their approach. So much so they drain out of the, the values and say let's let's apply the whole thing towards uh, profit maximization and so on and so forth. So what happens is, um, in the context of applying it as uh, a study, applying it as a uh, not necessarily a, a, a field, an academic field, but a studies, right? Like so we have. Uh, ASEAN studies, we have women's studies, we have all kinds of studies that's very multidisciplinary. The action um, the research part, which we, I, I incorporated in the course that I introduced, globalization, cyberculture, and, and future studies, is where students uh, take up one particular problem, look at the issue, and see what is that single, single point of change they want to change. Uh, and it can be as small as not having toilet papers in uh, university restrooms. <laughs> it can be as small as that, you know, uh, and, and uh, you can effect change. Or they can effect change at the level of uh, uh, ranking and naming and shaming uh, malls based on their accessibility for a pers uh, person with disabilities. Uh, you can rank it five star, four star, three star. So we, we take the perspective of future studies, uh, looking at the possible uh, scenarios, looking at the possible uh, type of action and the outcome of action, right? And apply it in the action research and see what kinds of uh, outcomes you can get. And the outcomes can be measured again by the you know, structural, informational, behavioral, attitudinal, uh, even at the policy level. So with the action research fueled with or guided with futures literacy, the students can not just um, hope for the best outcome, but anticipate different outcomes and how to respond to different outcomes. And future studies or future uh, literacy is not just about strategic planning. In fact, Henry Minsberg, the guru, one of the gurus of uh, strategic planning, wrote the book called The Fall of Strategic Planning because if you look at strategic planning and a lot of the universities do <laughs> strategic planning, 87% of the plans fail. Why? <laughs> because they do not take into account that they, they could not control all the factors, elements outside there. And there are a lot of conditions outside there that can create different scenarios. So what we should do is to be prepared with different scenarios to enhance that we have capacity building in different scenarios and, and then work with different scenarios. And the policy that we want to effect is the policy of enhancing the capability to face different scenarios anchored, centered on the, on the values that we want. And the value, and I, I want to emphasize this again, we don't forget about the indigenizing our values. And then the Nusantara is about the shared sejahtera. Sejahtera, not for myself. Shared resources. We share our resources and share prosperity. No, the, the West Palin concept of state is where we have all these wars in South China Sea and all these border wars because we have this Western concept of state where they define borders. Is The sovereignty is based on borders. Nusantara is not based on borders. Nusantara is mandala system where we share our waters, we share our prosperity. So uh, the policy change that we want to see uh, cannot be just um, methodology based, but must be anchored to values. And the values must be 
in line with you know nusantara human values and of course faith based values we reveal knowledge you know, and it's not completely scientific knowledge but it's supported by science uh, but anchored uh, and aristotle said uh, what is it um, logos ought and should and is the slave of pathos logic is and should be the slave of emotions and our the deepest emotion is the the Paul B right? the leadership of Paul B right? that's the heart emotion so uh, um, uh, uh, the, the the essence is that that is the the idea of applying future um, literacy future uh, studies in a kind of action research that can affect policy changes and policy changes is not just the the laws right is it, it, you can draw the whole continuum of policy change up to uh, attitudinal informational change as well. So uh, it, it is useful in that sense. And, uh, and it is not a, a field, it is a study that must be anchored, uh, be, be, be contributed by different uh, disciplines, of course. Uh, I'll stop there first, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you for that, Dr. Rivani. Um, I actually got a message. Um, it was uh, texted to me um, by one of the participants, Dr. Nur Hayati. She's asking, she's asking, and anyone can answer this question. She's asking, how radical should the futures be? How radical should the futures be? And in the futures, would everything change? Are there anything, uh, is there anything that is constant? Is that, you're, you're on mute, Dr. Rivani. Okay. okay. Uh, um, and I, and uh, I think I, the, 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 the slide that I shared just now uh, was about how the past is never dead. It's not even past. That's, in the book Arikim of for Nun William Faulkner, that uh, and that um, there's a there's a very good question, man. Extremely important question. And uh, Hegel, the, the 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 guru to some extent of Marx, talks about this: that democracy, if you believe in democracy, right, uh, will 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 serve us better when there's a constant. And Hegel is actually an advocate of the monarch, the monarchy. So the monarchy, if you look at the Nusantara perspective, provides a kind of continuity, right? Uh, uh, and in Jogja, in the independence of in Indonesia, right? We see that all the sultans give, uh, give their power away, except for one, and that's Jakarta. And you see Jakarta, it is a place where you can find more peace. Uh, aman, um, lebih aman, lebih damai, uh, ayam tenteram, uh, gemah ribah, uh, loh jinawi, bahasa Indonesia, bahasa Jawa itu kan. So it's much more tenang, much more, because there is, the it's, it's not privatized, right? It's not, it's not moving as fast as the capitalists want it to move. Although the last five years, we can see more, more malls and all that, but not as fast as many other cities. So we will we will have to think of what you want to center and be anchored on. And those anchors must be values. Must, those anchors must be based on faith. Right? And if we are men of God, men of faith, then we should draw our values from there, from, from those sources, right? Uh, and, uh, and, uh, I, I think I think that's that's where we must start. That's where we must check ourselves, and that must be the constant measure of what is uh, the, the 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 yardstick. Uh, so uh, it's not about constant changes, moving towards the future for future sake. There's a lot in history that we must learn, preserve, indigenize. Yeah, and 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 I, I think we have lost a lot of our heritage because we do not appreciate uh, the past. And uh, and uh, uh, and we see uh, the revival, the rebellion that is occurring in United States, right? Especially a, a re re revival or rebellion from um, the ghost of the past that has not been addressed, 
and you see that in the new book of uh, Francis Fukuyama, like identity, right? So it is being encapsulated by the, 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 the idea of identity. Uh, so uh, we need to go back to our jati diri. And uh, uh, I think that is uh, a, a constant that you must seek to have. And uh, don't forget our, our compass. I think that's, that's the con. The, the, the constant is our compass, right? where we want to go, the, the Qiblat, our Qiblat. Uh, and the, the rest are us for us to work out, right? Uh, so yes, there is constant. I believe in that constant, and that constant must be values and faith. Uh, so thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, Prof Murad, please. We've, yeah, we've got about uh, 10 minutes left. Yeah. Uh, Rivani mentioned Francis Fukuyama. Uh, his famous... Uh, uh, the end of uh, history, the last man. Fukuyama is a is a trajectory of uh, the Rand Corporation, the genesis of uh, uh, the beginnings of post-war future studies. So you can see the discourse coming out from Fukuyama uh, in his many books about society, about democracy. Uh, and also another person, another Japanese is, uh, I think, Michio Kaku, uh, who, who, who talks about physics and the future of humanity. That's also future studies. But I want to mention this. Uh, the classical view of social science is to predict and control. But future studies is not about prediction and control. Future studies, uh, to, to respond to the question, uh, perhaps would have to look into extremes in terms of scenario, uh, the utopian and the dystopian. So these are two extreme scenarios, uh, and, and from there the various alternatives. So these are these are the things I think that uh, you know, it's 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 not determining uh, the future. It's looking into the future and preparing for what could come, and 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 uh, using our agency uh, for what we prefer to be uh, at the individual level, at the community level, at the societal level, at the national level. And this is what I think uh, we should see future studies as. Yes, that's that's very very true. I mean, it's it's about making decisions every single day about the future, and and there are several alternative futures out there, and a spectrum, and uh, you know, and it's, it's about exercising choice as best as we can. We are not saying that we are predicting the future. We are not, but we need to be prepared. Um, Juan Fazida. I would love it if you could um, end the session with, uh, you know, what, 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 what your, your, with all your, your, your golden nuggets and your pulse of wisdom, please. Okay, thank you, Zarina. So I'd like to, you know, I, I agree with uh, Prof. Dr. Murat just now about the utopian and the dystopian. Now, this is what future studies uh, is all about. Now, we prepare for a utopian uh, future. But at the same time, we are also prepared for a dystopian one. And, be, and, and uh, to that extent, the, uh, the strategic planning, as we mentioned, of course, uh, future studies, uh, strategic planning is not about future studies, but with future studies complementing the strategic planning, you can have or you can realize that utopian future that you want. And this is something that complements. And in fact, uh, many research has, uh, in fact, uh, shown that there are complementarities between strategic planning and future studies, one complementing the other, because in the studies of uh, futures, uh, there is this basic concept of futures thinking that is alignment. Now you have to align your vision to your strategy and they must be account, uh, there must be some form of accounting. There must be some form of a measure. A vision that is not measured will end up in failure. And that's how strategic plans actually fail because their visions are not measured and they're not aligned to what they want in the first place. And the, the, um, the, uh, the, the uh, stakeholders, in fact, uh, they most probably they, they, they did not understand their inner story, their narratives. So um, I think I'd like to conclude, uh, Zarina. Um, I'll conclude with a strong remark, all right? Now, um, as it is, we say, features literacy and future studies, they are in fact very critical in ensuring a viable future. Now, for any organization, even for the world, and at the individual level as well, we should be using future studies to plot our desired future. Now, we do not want, at this point, uh, Zarina, uh, Prabhupada Murad, and Dr. Rivani, we do not want a key Sarah Sarah future, do we? We do not want that. 
um, you know, uh, you remember the song, Kishara Shara, right? What yes. will be, will be. And it says the future is not ours to see. Now, that was before. The song was written in 1956. And, uh, it, you know, we were, we were not born again yet then, uh, uh, Zarina. But it was mentioned that the future is not ours to see. But now the song is different. The future is ours to see. We plot, we narrate, we create. Um, so uh, this is uh, very uh, true at this point of time. My question would be, Zarina, to all of us here, uh, those listening there, and uh, all of us, uh, Prof. Murat and Dr. Rivani, my question would be, what is our song? What's our inner story? Thank you. That's really wonderful. I need to clap because you brought in a song, but then I, I, you also reminded me of how old I am repeatedly in the webinar, I, might, I must mention. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I had um, a lot of fun and I'm very grateful and uh, I'd like to seriously, sincerely thank from the bottom of my heart uh, for uh, to, to every single uh, one of you. Professor Murad, yourself, and Dr. Rivani, and Pan Fazida for joining um, IIUM because IUM is the host of this platform. And um, I, I would like to thank all of you for joining us, even though it, it was such short notice. But I think um, it's, it's a perfect time. It's a perfect time with the Future Scenarios Workshop going on and with uh, the CMCO, the control movement being extended. And, you know, we're going through the grind and feeling the effects of... Um, the pandemic and uh, it's uh, it's anyone's guess what's going to happen next, um, and uh, we don't we don't really know. We can't predict when the CMC is going to be going to be lifted, but we need future studies now more than ever. And I think we each have a song in our heart. We each have a narrative on every uh, and on every front. The personal front, we have families. Um, how do we plan for the children or for the husband or for the loved ones and uh, in our organization and our society and in our community? So um, like it or not, we are all mini minute futurists. Maybe some mm -hmm. of us needs our framework a bit refined and altered somewhat, but we're actually thinking of the future every single day, several times a day. Wouldn't you all agree? Yes. Yes, thank exactly, you. Anyway, exactly. one last one last comment by Professor Murad, um, oh. because because yeah, I'm 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 being a bit cheeky. Uh, he represents uh, International Islamic University. <laughs> uh, I I think it, it, it to resonate what uh, what was just uh, said uh, by yourself and uh, Fazida. Uh, we put well, we put the instruments together and ensemble, and we render the music. That's what we should do. Okay, very good. Anyone want to sing a song for me? <laughs> no? Okay, I'm kidding. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you for the listeners. Uh, about 25 people have joined us. We had uh, one solid, two solid questions from Dr. Nur Hayati. Thanks to her. And... Um, have a great afternoon. We will see you again, hopefully, in another program. Take care and salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Bye, everyone.